Welcome Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. And Karibuni Sana to Django Kennels. Let's go and see what we have. The first thing I'd like to introduce to you is our kitchen. So this is where we, we prepare our meals for the dogs. We use firewood to cook our meat or to boil our meat. Normally it's just the meaty bone. Of course, sometimes we'll uh, do some uh, some ugali or some rice. Most most of the time it's ugali. Uh, we will do some veggies. Um, our manager Alex usually puts some cabbages in the in the meat just to give them that uh, balance in terms of diet. And then from the kitchen. Let me show you where we store the meat. So this is our cold storage. So when the meat comes, the first thing we do is we, we have to know the kgs that we have. Uh, we have our freezer here. This is where we store the meat. Just to make sure that our dogs always have supply. And then I'll introduce you to our dogs. Before we go to the dogs, so this is the firewood that we stack to make sure that we are sorted in terms of um, our food preparation. So we have a supplier who brings this firewood to make sure that we never, we never go missing. Like that. All right. So I'll introduce you to the kennels. Uh, as you can see, the structure is really simple but well thought out. This was an additional part, it wasn't there uh, uh, when we began. The lower section is what we set up as the, the, the first bit. And as you can see, we have a lot of air, air space. We've allowed many spaces to, just to accommodate circulation of air. Dogs love air, so aeration is critical. You must make sure that if you're building your kennel, there's space for circulation because you want the dogs to breathe fresh air all the time. Hello dog lovers, my name is Richard Mongai from Django Kennels. So welcome to this amazing uh, kennel we have here in uh, a place, we call it Moranga but it's not Moranga really, it's, um, it's a combination of Moranga and Maragua. Uh, the village itself is called Kagondoine and uh, we are slightly off the thicker road, it's 10 minutes from a place called Kabati is 15 minutes from Thika. Just to give you a bit of perspective of where the kennel is located. So Django Kennels is named after my dad. My, my, my dad's name is Django and uh, we thought why not honor him by you know giving the kennel uh, a name that will last in the family for generations because it takes care of the dogs while we are away. And uh, he, he's one of the people who made me fall in love with uh, dogs. I think ever since um, I was young, there was always a dog in the family. And uh, even before my mom passed, my mom passed uh, last year, um, uh, we, we always had a dog in the family. So dogs have always been part and parcel of what we normally do on our day to day. And I think that's why I fell in love with dogs. So uh, actually, even the fact that I, I, I get to enjoy my time with uh, dogs just give, give me joy. And I think the same would be said by all dog lovers. So that's basically the reason why I fell in love with dogs. Uh, and we started this kennel from that kind of a passion. 
perspective. We've been operational for the last, uh, I'd say, like six months. However, we've had uh, dogs uh, in, in the compound all through. But now serious breeding has been going on for the last about six months, six to eight months. Uh, the dogs that we have been uh, breeding here are the large dogs. We do not keep the small breeds. So we have German Shepherds um, of various kinds. We have the black and tan. We have the solid black uh, Shepherds. And we also have uh, Swiss Shepherds. And um, we also have a Sable, a young Sable. And other than the German Shepherds and the whites, uh, the... the, the the normal Swiss and the black and tans, we also have uh, boar belts and we have Rottweilers. So those are the big breeds that we have. And our passion is to breed dogs that are really, really healthy, that are loving to the family members, and dogs that can give uh, protection. They have high ball drive and they are very, very friendly to the family members. We do not necessarily have to lock them up, but we, we, we prefer it to have them placed in lock when we have visitors who might be afraid of dogs, but they are very friendly. So those are the breeds we have, and we hope to, in the, uh, we also have a husky, sorry, I forgot to mention, we, we also have a new addition to the family. We have a, a male, uh, both blue eyes husky, and uh, he's recently joined the park. And the reason we got the husky is because we're trying to see how to continually grow the kennel to also provide the needs that our, our, you know, our, our clients and people who have been asking about what we do uh, would like from us. So the husky is going to give us stud services and we're also going to try and see if we can get more huskies to join the, the park. So that's our passion, to grow um, a really healthy team of dogs who will give protection and love to the families that we eventually get to rehome. I mean, the reason why we have focused on the large breeds is due to the fact that uh, the large breeds are known for, most of them are known for security purposes. They're, they're known to provide really good security, like the German Shepherds. And I would be very honest by saying that most of the people that have been visiting us and the people who want dogs from us want to have these dogs for protection. Like we have people who have uh, recently, you know, built their homes and they want dogs to help with, um, you know, guarding. So guard dogs for us has been a, a, a primary agenda, even in terms of setting up the kennel. And I, I, I bet the uh, most people who one the small breeds would be people who live in uh, in apartment buildings and the small breeds to be honest has not been a very primary drive for this kennel not to say that we would not venture into the small breeds based on the demand that comes to the kennel but for now the demand is mainly for the big uh, the large breeds and we hope to continue maintaining really really good quality of the German shepherds the bobel the Rottweiler, and of course the Husky. The Husky is, uh, for now, the Husky is going to be a showline Husky. Uh, Huskies are not known for protective work, though they are very active and they are very agile. They are not known to do much of security work. So, a, a, a lot of the most of the dogs we have do not necessarily need training because they are very, um, they are naturally aggressive even in terms of how their demeanor is, they're naturally aggressive. So what we do is we give them basic obedience training. So the aggression training is not done at the kennel. And if you want to have aggression training, we'd have to come and probably do it after rehoming the, the dog after some time. So most of the times the dogs we have, especially the, the parent dogs, would have only obedience training. We do not train on aggression. However, these dogs, are, they, are, they are mean. If you happen to visit and uh, you know they, they sense danger or they sense that you're an outsider, they will be quick to, to put you in check. So just to give perspective, the breeding itself is what we haven't been doing actively, but we've had dogs all along. You know, then the, the oldest dog we have is around 
two years. Um, her name is Kyla. She's a German Shepherd, a long coat. She's two years old. And we we haven't, we never thought of breeding the dogs. We only kept dogs as security dogs. You know, we had uh, three German Shepherds and we had one Rottweiler. So one of the German Shepherds has actually been uh, taken on assignment. He's uh, doing some guard work. So he's not in the compound. But we have the other two original German Shepherds and the Rottweiler. So we, we never thought of doing, uh, let me say, going commercially into breeding until maybe six or eight months ago. The puppies that we, we, we got on board, all of them were gotten from uh, other breeders. So some of the trusted breeders that we have um, in, in the country, we got in touch with them. We visited, we had conversations, and we expressed our desire to venture into the large breeds. And I'm happy that, you know, um, I was able to get a lot of support from local breeders. And some of them I actually met through uh, watching Dog TV Kenya. And, you know, so I, and that's why I appreciate the channel because it's really helped me a lot. Even in terms of some of the things we do, even setting up the kennel, you know, we lo we just looked, we just watched the the Doc TV Kenya documentaries, and we were very impressed by some of them. We borrowed from a few of them, and then we came up with our own structure to suit the need that we currently have. And yeah, it's been a really interesting journey, and and a lot of support also from the the breeders we have because it, the the. I, I think the fact that communication amongst the breeders is is very thrive and people talk a lot and they share ideas and they share you know challenges that they're going through all the successes has been very helpful even in terms of getting people to be interested in the dogs that we have some of them have just been referrals so I'd say the the family of breeders has been amazing very supportive It's a good question because I think this conversation can uh, go on and on and on. I think I'll let me just speak on uh, this dog here, Rover. So, Rover, I got Rover when she was about six weeks old from a breeder in uh, Kitengela. And the reason why I got Rover is because um, I was really, really looking for a dog who would give me company in the house because like I told you this dog stays in an apartment building and you know I did a lot of research because the only dog I would uh, you know spend time with was the dog that uh, belonged to my, my parents and I could only see that dog once in a while so I wanted a dog that I'd see on a regular basis knowing that the dog that belongs to my parents when I come home that dog would never forget me. Like, that dog would give me so much love, you know. Like, one of the things that m used to make me come to visit my parents in Shags was the fact that I'd see that dog. There were different dogs over time, but the name remained in the family, and the name is Soja. In fact, we have one of our Rottweilers. His name is Soja, because the name is, um, I you know, it stays in the family. So, dogs will give you unconditional love. You know, they will, they will not care whether you're thin or fat or you're smart or you're dumb. Dogs don't care. You know, they will love you unconditionally. Even if you're telling the dog a boring story, the dog will be as interested as if you're telling a very interesting story. The dog will give everything to make sure that you're happy. And the dog will sense if you're not okay. The dog will, the dog will understand without you having to speak to the dog, you know. So I'd say that the reason why we, I personally keep a dog in my house and the reason why I went into breeding is because I'd like to share the same joy that I have when I spend time with Rover, uh, my golden retriever, and the fact that sometimes I can be feeling, you know, like I had a really long day at work. I come home. And Rover is waiting for me 
very happy waiting for me to take her on a walk and they take the walk with Rova and they come back home and my mind is fresh i'm feeling rejuvenated i'm feeling like the stress i had at work is gone and i i feel like i can face another day you know i can face some more challenges so that's the beauty about dogs dogs will give you so much uh, calm they will help you relieve stress stress they will want to play with you even when they you know when you don't feel like and when you play with them you know you you get some hormones some happy hormones going and your mood suddenly becomes better so i'd recommend dogs to everyone who's um, to all dog lovers and uh, potential dog lovers dogs are amazing creatures you know i think all dogs would go to heaven i think they 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 are all in heaven when they die they go to heaven so yeah i think that's why i'd recommend dogs other than the fact that dogs are also very practical for those who have homes or who are planning to build uh their own homes w- with compounds dogs are amazing in terms of protection you can get an amazing uh uh big breed or large dog that will guard your home uh protect your family and your your goods in a in a very loyal and loving manner at the same time so yeah that's i think that that would, those would be my reasons for why people should rec- consider having dogs in their families so it's it's a very interesting question because i would actually never think of those challenges as challenges really i never think of them as challenges or to be honest for someone who's not um really sold to the idea or to the projects you might consider them as challenges so i think some of the hardships that i might say i faced initially when i uh, i i got rover was the fact number one she was very young when i got her she was only 6 weeks old and so yeah, very young puppies are susceptible to infections um one is a gonjeka you know so the vet visit number one for me was an issue in fact at one point rover fell ill and i had to get her admitted she had uh, to get admitted for some time she had some infection and obviously so the vet the vet bills for the first year of a, of a dog's life might set you off a bit so that was an issue um, and this is i'm talking about rover uh feeding was another issue some dogs are very choosy so by the time i got to what rover really wanted to eat i had rummaged through all the kibble all the 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 meat products everything so she eats one thing today tomorrow we give her she's like ah ah yo so just kidding yo yeah, we'll try something else so we tried and tried and tried and tried until eventually you know we got to something that she really loves dogs are carnivorous so anything meaty would be great they 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 love some meat in their lives but you see meat is not the only thing you should feed them you have to give them a balanced diet so sometimes you have to give them some vegetables um sometimes you have to give them some rice but that's once in a while most of the time meat is meat is is primary so so there feeding is usually an issue especially for those very choosy eaters and then if you're living in a in an apartment apartment building there are some apartments which don't allow people to stay with uh, pets uh so you have to be careful to understand or to know whether you're you know you're allowed to actually live with a pet in your apartment so that's another challenge that uh would face someone with you know with a pet in an apartment building uh so let me just come back to the kennel and talk about some of the things you know that I would say were challenging or that give us a bit of a a difficulty so the initial item definitely as a business or as a setup uh, it can be very costly especially if you want to do something um, something really 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 good in your you know in your eyes it can be expensive and that's why i think some people shy away not just from this type of business but any type of business when you think about the initial capital investment it might be a bit much so you might feel um it 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 might it might you know kind of make you feel like you you may not want to get into that so that was the first thing obviously getting the good breed dogs getting really quality dogs that would join our family that was also an issue because 
we, we wanted to get several. So at, at that time, it, it, it needed us to be ready for that. So that would be another challenge. Then the big hassle now is the dog is at home. Now you need to figure out how to feed the dog and what the dog needs to eat. So that was another issue. Luckily, we have been uh, blessed with um, many, many partners. We have a vet who's always at a beck and call. In fact, last night, uh, he was here until around maybe 9 or 10 because we, we had a new entrant into the kennel and we needed the entrant to be properly taken care of, you know, the, the normal routine, the, the deworming, the review, uh, checking that the dog is physically uh, okay to, and, and making sure that, you know, we do a couple of, um, you know, um, um, cleanups, make sure that there are no ticks or fleas on the dogs, all that stuff. So our vet is very, very loyal to this kennel and is always available He's, uh, at a beck and call. So that's another issue that was a bit of a uh, challenge for us. We had to figure out how we would deal with um, vet needs at the kennel. And then for the food, we have a butcher who, and, and like I said, we are blessed because we have um, a kitchen geo not too far from us. So we have a butcher who's always supplying meat on a daily basis. Uh, our normal daily uptake or uh, intake or whatever feed for the dogs is about uh, 30 to 35 kgs of meat every day, which is uh, supplied by our butcher, and we are, we are happy that that is done for the large dogs. Uh, remember, for the small, because we we have two programs or two plants to feed the dogs. We have the really young puppies, and then we have the big dogs. So the the big dogs will eat the meaty meat. You know, the meat that comes with uh, its bone, but it has a lot of meat on it. So the dogs would feed on that. And then for the puppies, they would get softer bits of the meat. And then we supplement that with kibble. And uh, sometimes we'll give them um, eggs. Eggs are really good for the coat. And mala as opposed to milk. Because obviously they do not have enzymes to digest uh, raw milk. So you have to give them mala, which, has, which is more delicate to the, you know, the very sensitive stomachs. So, yeah, and then obviously that thing would be in terms of marketing. Um, because you see, once you get a liter of, say, like 10 puppies, you want as quickly as possible to get the puppies rehomed. So, yeah, that has been a bit of an issue, especially I think I'd say with the um, tough economic situations in the country, some people would not consider having a dog as a primary need. So it's it's been a bit different, as um, many businesses would probably, you know, also confirm. But we are still moving. We're still going, despite it all. Uh, that's why I said I wouldn't say there are challenges. They're just hurdles that we have to jump over. And you know, I'm grateful for all of them because they make us tougher. They gi they give us learning, uh, learning curve. It's a learning curve which we we grow really well through. So yeah. So, well, w our day here at the kennel, Jungle Kennels, begins uh, at around maybe 6.30. And it begins with general cleanup. So we would get the dogs out of the kennels so that they can take their um, uh, toilet break. Most of them are broken. They, are, they would only wait until they are released from their kennels so that they can go on a toilet break. So that happens in the morning when we wake up. And as that happens, the kennels are cleaned so that once they go back to the kennel, the kennel is fresh for them. Uh, once the kennels are cleaned, the dogs will go for a bath. We have, crea we have a, sp a space where that happens so that our dogs are constantly, s they are speak and span. You know, we, if you saw our dogs, uh, you would not think they are in shags, for instance, because they look very clean. So once the cleaning is done the, and the toilet break has happened, we will take the dogs back into the kennels and cooking begins. Because remember, we have two feeds. So we have the uh, small puppies who will be fed twice in the morning and the evening and the large breeds which will be fed once in the evening. So we'll do the morning feed 
for the young puppies. Normally the food is usually ready because we leave it cooking in the evening at very low heat. So that by the time we wake up, wake up in the morning, the food is ready so that we can serve together with kibble supplemented. Once the feeding is done, the, uh, the dogs will stay in, the, um, in their kennels, but they will come out at around midday to bask in the sun when it's not raining. Today has been a very rainy day, by the way. Uh, so they will come to bask out in the in, in the in their own area of play. They will play. They will get to socialize because we really love socializing our dogs. We realize that it's healthy not just for them but also for us as the uh, people who take care of them. So socialization includes training, obedience training. Uh, you know, we will help them understand themselves and each other, and then. Uh, once we've had a bit of uh, training and basking, we'll get them back into the sheds. And at around 3, 3 or 4 p.m., we start serving their meal for the large breeds. So we'll serve them. They will have their meals. After they have their meals, uh, at around 6, uh, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., they will come out so they can have their bathroom break. It's their last break before they... Uh, go back to the kennels to spend the night. So they will be in the kennels at around 8 p.m. and they will sleep in the kennel until 6:30 the next morning when the day begins. So that's that's the um, the normal schedule at the kennel. Okay, now I've heard that you say that your dogs uh, sleep in the kennel. And you have times that you put them back into the kennel during the day. Yeah. Do you think that's good for the dogs? Ama, how do you balance between between keeping your dogs, releasing the energy yeah. of your dogs, yeah. and uh, exercising them? Do you think the breaks that you give them are enough? Ama, what is the reason for you keeping your dogs overnight in the kennel? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question because most people would assume that, you know, dogs should sleep out at night, you know, for instance. So the reason why we allow our dogs to sleep in or have that normal circadian sort of uh, rhythm is because we believe uh, dogs, as long as you've given your dog enough time to exercise during the day, given the, the dog a lot of socialization, given the dog a lot of, um, you know, interaction amongst themselves, you tire them both physically and mentally. So you want them to also relax because it's part of their growth. Remember, dogs do not live as long as human beings do. They have a very short time span compared to us. So they spend most of their time sleeping. And even the people who have guard dogs, it's not that their guard dogs will be just roaming around at night. They'll be somewhere just resting, sleeping. So we allow our dogs to sleep just to give them better health outcomes, to make them stronger, to give them better rest, to give them an amazing life. That's all we are about. We do not believe in suffering the dogs. Uh, we have many other uh, security systems in, uh, that we have here. Not to say that the dogs are not security dogs, they are, but we do not want them to be our primary security because that's not the purpose they are here for. So we have other systems that we have in place in terms of security and it would be very unwise for someone to think that those dogs would not attack them if they needed to. So we just let them rest in their kennels unless there's something specific want to train um, maybe in terms of their um, reaction to the night cold for instance but most of the time we just let them rest how do you control diseases and pests in your kennel yeah that's a very good one because if you have many dogs and they you know they're constantly moving out of the kennel and out of the compound you're bound to once in a while face some infection or some pests, you know, a pest attack, for instance. Or, for instance, if you have visitors into the compound, both human and other dogs, one or two of them may come with something that's not wanted. So, we have a vet who's always available for us. But before we even go to the vet, we have basic control measures, you know. The kind of... Uh, 
washing agents that we have to clean the dogs are such created in such a way that they help us minimize the pests as much as possible by pests we're talking about things like lice fleas you know the ticks th those are very common so those basic cleaning basic hygiene takes care of that and then for people who want to come into the compound or people who want to see the dogs what you try and uh, ensure is that we, we we encourage people to wash their hands before they touch our dogs you know so that if you have anything that you're carrying in terms of microbes and bacteria that can be taken care of there's just basic basic stuff like how you treat your visitors if they're coming to your house but now we take it a bit uh, to, the, to the next level because we also don't want to have a situation where we have uh, something that we did not see coming. For instance, if there is a systemic infection, maybe you have warm infest infestation or we have the major diseases, especially for the young puppies, that's where our vet comes in. So we have a, 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 a vaccination schedule that our vet follows, especially for the puppies. Once we get the puppies, within four, four weeks, four to five weeks, we get the first parvovirus injection. And then on the eighth week, they will get their second parvo. After the eighth week, they're usually good to go, basically to be rehomed. But if we continue having them in the kennel, what we do is we have another repeat on the 12th week where we have a, a DHLP. And we also give a rabies at that time. So that's our routine for the puppies. And then from that point on now, if the puppy or if the dog will be with us even after the six months, uh, after their six months, we will give them a rabies at six months. But it's very rare. We haven't had that uh, happen. By that time, we usually do not have any puppies with us. All of them are usually rehomed. So that's for the puppies. For the big dogs, we just do once a year rabies injection. And that's uh, okay for us. So other than that, deworming is done for the puppies every two weeks. And then for the large dogs, we do that every, one, every, every three months. Sorry, So we do every two weeks for the puppies until they are about two months b before they go to their other homes, their forever homes. For the big dogs, we do every three months. But sometimes when you see, the, you know, when you see need or if you feel like there is uh, a possibility of an an ongoing infection, we just do the deworming. So for deworming, actually, we, we our vet encourages us to do it on a very regular, even once a month, and I think that's uh, okay for anyone else who might be listening. Um, it's, um, it's interesting that you asked that because at Jungle Kennels, we believe in going really big it's it's a it's a it's something that we began with as an initial thought process and i have to admit it's been our driving force just wanting to do something better than we did or better than it's been done or better than we did it last because we we do not have a professional really we we, we are not uh we did not start this from a professional point of view what i'm saying is we are always learning. Every day we are learning. We are always trying to improve on something that we are doing uh, in terms of feeds, in terms of training, in terms of the dog breeds we have. So for Jungle Kennels, we see ourselves becoming the largest dog breeders in this region, but not just in this region. We want to be known countrywide. We want to get ourselves into competitions and win competitions. We want our German Shepherds and our other big breeds, the Rottweilers and the Bobels, to be the um, best dogs in competitions. We want to have people speak about Jungle Kennels as a place where you can come and get the best puppies, the most healthiest of puppies. We want this kennel to be the most famous, even in terms of continuity of learning and research. So that's where we see ourselves. We want to continually improve our trade. We want to continually uh, better our outcomes. So that even the next time we do a repeat on uh, Doc TV Kenya, comments will be very obvious that we have continually, you know, upped our game. So in that regard, we actually welcome people to come and see what we're doing here. Uh, come and see how we we are we are, we are breeding our dogs and the, how our dogs are, are looking. 
and you're welcome to even you know pick a puppy and uh, you know be part of this uh, kennel's journey to be honest like any business like any other business um dog breeding comes with its own you know ups and downs and i'd say for this particular business it's very essential it's almost imperative or critical that you begin from a passion perspective like if you are not a dog lover you do not really love dogs uh, dogs are not in your system you just want to you looked at a, a balance sheet or someone showed you a business plan and you saw the zeros and you're like this is what i want to do most in mo most occasions i have seen people fail you know because the thing about this business is it has its own uh, cycles so for instance you will have a season where you have 10 puppies and out of the 10 puppies only two get rehomed and remember these puppies need vaccinations they need the warming they need food and puppy food can be a bit pricey as compared to and the puppies would eat more they need more care and tender uh, attention so what i'm trying to say is number one passion you have to have a passion for your for dogs you have to love dogs for you to be successful in the business and i guess it's it's the same for almost every other uh business if you're passionate about what you're doing then you're not actually working you you're doing something that you love so when we have bad days we are consoled by the fact that our dogs look amazing they are so healthy they are so loving and they give us joy you know that's a priceless earning that you can get from the dogs rehoming puppies and getting the you know the sale value is just an addition because then it helps us at least sustain and keep us af keeps us afloat it meets the costs of uh, running the kennels so i'd say passion is very important for anyone who would like to get into the dog breeding business um obviously initial setup capital might be needed but for anyone who has a passion for dogs and would like to get into the breeding business money mm, yes you will need some money but you do not need to go big you do not need to start with a kennel uh, you know like a high tech kennel of 30 dogs you do not need to do that just get your one maybe two dogs uh, you can have a very simple structure made by wood and nails and you can begin from there and then build it from that point on so Th that's for someone who's very passionate about dogs but may not be sufficiently uh, capitalized or you, you do not have enough money uh, meaning anybody can do it you can get feed from your local butcher you can get uh, you know to talk to some people who are, who could give you something for your dogs at least as a beginning and then from there build it from that point so i think the 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 most important thing and I'll, I'll repeat this because i said it again and i think all people who do this business will tell you passion is imperative because the ups and downs in this business especially in terms of uh, selling your dogs or you get 10 puppies you're hoping to sell all of them in uh, two months and remember you have taken a lot of care for them until two months when they're ready to go at two months out of the 10 eight die you're left with two you know and then you know you start losing hope or you start feeling so uh, desperate so yeah so these things would happen just to put it out there it's something that is very common in the business but as long as you're passionate about it you figure it out as you move along so at uh, jungle kennels we do several things one of the things that we are passionate about is getting really really quality puppies and i believe the people who have um happened to get puppies from us can attest to that fact we are very passionate about the kind of puppies we get from our dogs here so that's the first thing the second thing is we do stud services 
So for all the breeds that we have, the um, uh, solid black uh, German Shepherds, the Rottweilers, and that, the black and tan Shepherds. So all those dogs we have, st and, and the Husky, uh, the Husky, the male, we have a male, both blue eye Husky. So we have stud services for anyone who would be interested in that for all the dog breeds. Uh, training services, we do house calls and this is something that you're passionate about just helping people get to manage their dogs and have an, a, a better experience with their dogs that you do not feel like a, the dog is um, a bothersome uh, member of the family so we do a lot of obedience training uh, you know potty training for 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 people especially that live in apartments that has been really really uh, good for us we're not big on um uh, aggression training because most of our dogs like i said are naturally driven towards aggression we're not so passionate about that we love to train on obedience because obedience is what you will use on a on on an everyday sort of uh, perspective so as when once your dog is obedient it can very easily become aggressive so obedience training for us is critical and so we do house training uh, I think those are the services that we offer here at Django Kennels. Can you tell us, eh, apart from watching Dog TV, yeah. what inspired you to making the kind of kennels that you've made? Yeah. And your kennel is a, like a locked up uh, setup. Yeah. Can you tell us what was your inspiration and why did you come up with the setup that you came up with? Okay, it's a, it's a good question. And I think this I should have mentioned when I was talking about people who are passionate about dogs, but may not be adequately endowed in terms of money or capital is also in terms of space so our kennel setup was largely inspired by the fact that we are short of space we are limited in terms of the space we have to work with and i think if you look at the structure it looks like it occupies a very small space but at the same time it's able to hold many dogs at one spot so we looked at several options and um, we wanted to and and like i said just by watching dog tv we captured a couple of ideas and we saw a few structures we borrowed from some of them and then we came up with a structure that would fit the space that we had so we were inspired by the fact that some kennels were not really large but they had really good drainage and they could hold many dogs uh, in one spot. So that led to the kennel structure that we have. Uh, if you see it, we have dogs face facing each other, uh, the kennels, I mean, facing each other, and we have a corridor in between just to allow for proper cleaning and drainage. And then we also had additional uh, kennels built or added as we grew. And we have slightly uh, you know, a compound where the dogs are able to play and socialize and just mingle with each other. So we were lucky with the setup we had. It's a small setup, but we took advantage of it and we were able to come up with something that makes sense to jungle kennels. So for people who, for dog lovers, dogs are, in my opinion, dogs are the easiest pets to have because they will love you regardless the only thing you need to do is make sure your dog is well fed well groomed people ignore that a lot um there's someone i recently encountered and i looked at the dog it's um a long-coated dog a dog that needs a lot of care in terms of demarting in terms of uh, washing so proper grooming is very essential if you're not able to do it get a professional to groom the dog for you because some of the dogs will even have problems, you know, uh, overheating because of the matting that happens in the thick fuzz. So get professionals to do it if you can't do it yourself. Make sure your dog is well exercised, well engaged mentally and physically. So either walk your dog. Some people walk their dogs twice a day. I would say there's no minimum or minimum amount of time you can exercise your dog. But for me, my recommendation is always to do it for about 30 minutes to a maximum of one hour per session, depending on the type of dog you have. Some dogs are really, really active and they would need more 
exercise and more engagement. So if you have a dog that's, you know, like a Belgian Malinois, for instance, they would need more attention. They would need more exercise. They would need more, more, more game time. So give your dog the attention it needs. You can't have a dog, you know, like a Belgian Malinois and have the dog in your apartment, sit in the apartment all day and then come home and then just sit on the couch with the dog. The dog will eat all your sofas, will eat all your your furniture because the dog is frustrated. You know, that, that's actually why dogs misbehave because they're not ex- expending the energies that they have. So if you just exercise your dog properly, walk your dog, play with your dog, uh, create um, interesting games with your dog, like, you know, help them search for something, you know, hide food somewhere and help them sniff it out. And even when you do walks, and I see this uh, regularly, and for people who might uh, have a, a, a following, maybe know who uh, Rover is, you would know that when I walk Rover, I rarely put her on leash. Uh, not to say that walking your dog on uh, leash is wrong. It's actually recommended because, you know, some dogs may be overexcited. So most of the time I will walk Rover off leash to allow her to sniff her environment because it allows her to know her environment uh, understand which dogs pass by or just to understand where she is and the messages that are in the, in the environment so heel walking is great and it just shows that your dog is trained to heel walk but in terms of exercising the mental faculties of your dog maybe not the best even if you're walking your dog on leash you can have a long leash so that uh, you can allow your dog to sniff as much as possible. And don't be in a hurry because now the walk is for the dog, not for you. You know, Even if you do a short course walk, maybe like uh, 500 meters, let the dog sniff as much as possible. Don't be in a rush to jack your dog on the leash. Let the dog sniff. Let the dog enjoy the walk. Let the dog understand the environment as much as possible, and then just uh, enjoy each other. Some people say my dog doesn't sleep on the couch, doesn't uh, uh, spend time on the couch or in the bed. There are no rules. If you want your dog to s- to sit on the couch, let your dog sit on the couch. If you want to sleep with the dog on your bed, sleep with your dog on the bed. Just enjoy your dog's company, because these dogs are not going to be here for too long. They, most of them will not live beyond 10 years. If they do 13, they've done like crazy amounts of years. So they're with you for a very brief period of time. Enjoy each other as much as possible. And yeah, dogs are amazing. We have, uh, uh, we're on IG, we're on Instagram. Our, our uh, handle is simple, it's Django Kennels. That's all. J-A-N-G-O, Django, like Django Unchained without the D. <laughs> so Django Kennels. If you'd like to visit us, we are, like I said, in a place called Kagondoine. Uh, Kagondoine is like 15 minutes from Thika town. So most people will visit here on the weekend, maybe on Saturdays or on Sundays for those who want to come after church. So we have visitors on those days. They'll come and see the dogs we have. Um, and if they, uh, they, they'd like to rehome, that happens as well. But on on our Instagram pages, we post uh, what we are doing. Like right now, we have a litter of uh, German Shepherds. Just uh, the mom is a solid black, the dad is a black and tan, and uh, they are slightly over one month old now. They are actually five weeks old now, and they've recently got their first pavo. So we just take you through the journeys of all our litters and all our dogs. If you want to call, you can call zero uh, seven two one. Three five four nine two eight. That's zero seven two one three five four nine two eight. So that's a number that you can either text, call, WhatsApp, and we will give you our opinions, our thoughts, our ideas, and we will encourage you to join the Dog Lovers Club if you haven't joined it yet. For many reasons, to be honest, Dog TV Kenya, uh, I can't remember really how I chanced on it, but it gave me so many ideas and also encouraged me to get into the breeding business. Remember, I said I've always had dogs in my life, but never thought about turning my passion into a business. 
by watching Dog TV Kenya, I was able to see how people are doing it, and I I I guess I got the courage to take a leap of faith. Uh, I watch conversations. I listen to people's challenges. I listen to people's uh, you know different thoughts and perspectives of how they are doing their business, and I'm able to tweak or avoid a few things that people say they went through. So I'd encourage everyone to just take some time, subscribe to the channel, watch the videos. They're great learning um, uh, toolkits and you also learn about other breeds and um, get to interact with people. You also get to join another, a larger family of dog lovers because then uh, by sharing contacts and by sharing information on the channel, uh, through the comment section and even getting to talk to the breeders because they will leave their contacts, you're able to learn so much more. You're able to sharpen your skills. You, even in terms of you owning a dog, you get to learn so much about your dog. So by all means, watch Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Actually, the I'd, I'd like to shout out uh, specific people. So the first one I'd like to shout out is uh, Natned. Natned actually gave me one of my uh, dogs, a huge South African Bobel. You, if you got to uh, got into a page, you might have seen her. Her name is Malkia. Uh, and she's an amazing dog, huge South African Bobel. And we also got a Rottweiler from Natned. And the the roti, uh, her name is Empress, and she's an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, German roti. And then I'll also like to shout out uh, to Red Hill, to Dan. Dan is on my speed dial. I call him all the time. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, what we are doing, what's going on, how to sort some issue. Yeah, so Red Hill, amazing, amazing. And then Fidel. Uh, Fidel is also an amazing uh, kennel, by the way, because uh, we, we we borrowed a couple of things from Fidel, how they've done their drainage, for instance, and, and how their structures are put. We, we also kind of borrowed one or two things from them. So, yeah, just to mention but a few, but all the kennels that are on Dog TV Kenya are doing an amazing job, to be honest. And I big up all of you guys who are pushing the love, just keep doing your thing and we welcome other guys to also come and join us because it's all about the love for these dogs. See, every kennel, every dog lover has their own stories and what we are doing now, we are giving dog lovers a platform to give their stories, they are to give their journey of dog keeping, dog breeding and as we continue learning, we continue to thank our fans through your comments, through your liking, through your sharing, even giving us feedbacks on whatever we are not doing right. We thank all of our fans, continue watching. It's not an easy journey. It's a journey of passion. Just as dog lovers, we also have dogs. As dog keepers, it is also a journey that we face challenges and we also want to give you the best. We want you to continue learning for we know that this is every kennel is unique and we are all in a learning journey. Continue watching Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. And if you'd want to partner with us, you are always welcome. Hit our WhatsApp page, uh, check us on Instagram. You can also uh, message us on YouTube. We will respond. We always respond to all the feedbacks and comments that you give unto us. They are the ones that build us. And we, as we say, we are not doing it for ourselves. We are doing it for you guys. So continue watching and continue liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you would want to be featured, if you are a dog lover, and you are a dog keeper, and uh, you have a passion of dogs, and you'd want to continue learning, and you'd want to share your story, wherever you are in the country, for us to get different experiences. As we say, every kennel has its own experience. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you. For all our, la our viewers all over the world, we truly appreciate you. Continue commenting, continue giving us feedback, positive and negative. Remember, we only grow because of positive criticism. Thank you so much and 
out. Continue loving, taking care of your dogs. Thank you.